and gentlemen the time is here this weekend we are gambling ufc 306 is going to be happening we got sean o'malley versus now hold up i cannot pronounce this name but i did find a tutorial everybody hey henry Cejuto. thanks for breaking news on your youtube but who are you fighting I'm going to be fighting marab dashazvili my name is not bro learn to read and speak english let me help you listen there you go so that's who we have fighting this weekend i also saw on the fight card alexa grosso versus valentina shevchenko uh we got brian ortega versus diego lopez we got daniel z i've seen his fights i cannot pronounce his name either very young fighter i mean he's 25 years old and fighting in front of mexico fans and he only has one loss at, on 15. Now, now, granted, his opponent, Esteban R, we're just going to go with that, has almost a flawless record as well. So this could be a very, very close fight. But what I do think that he has the, the advantage on is that he stands at 6.1 feet tall versus his Esteban, uh, the opponent, his opponent is only 5.8. Now I understand, I understand that because he's taller doesn't mean that he'll always win the fight. I get that, but I just think that him being in front of the audience and so young, I think that I'm going to go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt. Granted, Esteban is only three years older, so I do feel that. Daniel will have to come out and prove himself. I know Brian Ortega and Diego Lopez were supposed to be fighting a while back, but then Brian Ortega got sick, so Daniel Iga had to step in on like an hour notice or like two hour notice. He ended up pissing in a cup and something like that, and then he ended up making weight. It was a really big ordeal because they were supposed to start off at 165 weight, then they had to go down to 155, or it was 155, and then go back up to 165. So, Dan so I will say that when I was watching Diego Lopez, it could be just from the, the amount of weight changes, but I didn't feel like he had the power or the accuracy available to him because of that so i i didn't feel very impressed when i was watching him fight uh dan uh dan ige so i think cardio wise he wasn't there either now granted it could be the weight cut because the weight cut went from 155 to 165 and then it was just a mess to be honest with you but i think brian ortega has something in him that he has to prove that he is able to put Diego Lopez's lights out. And I hate to say that, but I think in this way, Brian Ortega might get the job done by submission. Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. Listen, I mean, Valentina's had her great run. Let's be honest. She's had countless fights that were absolutely amazing. But she's getting higher up in the age count. She's 36 years old, while Alexa Grasso is 31 years old. Now, obviously, obviously, Valentina's time is coming to an end. Uh, I say that the era of her, like, knocking out people viciously is, is done. That's it. I think Alexa Grasso has really found her groove, especially now since she feels that the pressure is going to be on in front of the audience. I think this fight might be able to go easily, easily five rounds. I mean, she's going. Alexa Grasso has the pressure of when she walks forward and she's willing to to stand there and bang with Valentina Shevchenko. And these are two elite strikers. So in in the weirdest way, I don't think it's going to end by knockout. I think it's going to be submission as well. But I think it's going to go all the way down to round five. Uh, round five submission, if I had a guess. Sean O'Malley versus Marab. Now, this, this fight really intrigues me, mainly because when I was watching... The fight versus him versus Peter Young. 
it really showed that Sean's wrestling wasn't there. And I, because Peter Yan was really able to take him down numerous times. I mean, it wasn't just once, twice. It was repeatedly. Ah, you see in the fight that even Khabib was questioning the decision of how Sean O'Malley uh, and, and you can even see it in Sean O'Malley's facial expression at the end of the fight when his hand got lifted, like he was surprised. So I think Marab might be able to have a chance, but I don't think it's going to be there. And here's why. I think there is one person in the corner who really takes this seriously, and he happens to be in Sean O'Malley's corner. It, it would have to be Tim Welch. You see, Tim Welch is not a coach who is telling, uh, like, letting O'Malley's fame get to his head and, like, the success. If you look at Tim Welch, he's definitely pushing O'Malley to become a better wrestler. I feel that after, especially after Peter Yan's fight, of him getting taken down numerous times, I do think that Tim Welch went back to the drawing board and had O'Malley practice run drills on wrestling especially to get his cardio up for somebody who's going to put non-stop pressure like marab a dangerous fighter who he has caught maybe not striking wise maybe striking wise not as dangerous but when you see the cardio that he just walks forward and he pushes you down and he doesn't get tired look what he did to henry cejudo he went and destroyed a two-time belt uh, two-time champion of the UFC and gold medalist. So when you think about it, this fight will most likely go the distance as well. I don't think Marab's chin will be found by Sean O'Malley's. So with that, I will say I'm going to go with Sean O'Malley for this pick. We got Raul Rojas Jr. versus, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, Aori, I guess is his name. Look, I'm just saying, Raul is 19 years old. Aori is 31 years old. He has 11 losses, 25 fights. And Raul only has nine fights that were won and one fight that was lost. I do think I will have to go with the younger fighter. Uh, I, I see that Raul really takes it seriously. So perhaps, perhaps his youth and the cardio he's able to deliver is going to make a huge difference in this fight and the way it goes. So for the winner, I'm going to go, I'm going to have to go with Raul.